My number one pick for game of the year uh, goes to Sekiro. I'll admit, I don't think that Sekiro deserves the top spot of like the ultimate FromSoft game. I don't, I don't think it is. But for the first, I'd say the first like 10 hours of this game, it is friggin' magical. Like I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was an insane amount of fun. I thought the levels and the traversal, the most interesting thing to me in Sekiro at the end of the game didn't end up being the combat, which is what they really, really, really tried to, which is what they wanted to make the most, one of the most engaging parts of it. To me, it was the levels, the level design, but at the same time, some of the art in the levels, like the, the very tried and true Japanese mythology, um, had been done so much for a while now between Neo and even more games that are coming out. I don't know, I think, I think Sekiro is a really, really, really good game, and I'm glad I played it, but I do not get the same feelings. I don't get the same feelings that I got from the previous Souls games. Even, even like Demon's Souls. At the end of those games, I immediately wanted to pick the game back up and start it up again, and just keep on going. There is one thing in this game that makes me absolutely just Holy free holy, this game is amazing. That is a couple of the boss fights. I think a few boss fights in this game are some of the best that FromSoft has ever done. Easily. But funny enough, the thing that sort of grated on me after the first 10 hours was actually the combat. And that's because Sekiro is one of the first Souls-style games, or at least Miyazaki-made games, that doesn't let you change the weapon. So you're stuck with this one weapon. But the variety of skills and abilities you get with the weapon didn't compel me nearly as much. They didn't compel me forward to want to keep, keep, keep playing, keep playing. It's not a Souls game, technically, um, but it is very Souls-like in many design aspects. And I think it, it features the exact same level design as a Souls game, like almost the exact same. The same way you traverse and approach enemies is a bit different. And it's obvious that this game was going to be Tenchu, which the devs even admitted. But I really enjoyed it. Like, I'd still, I'd still give the game like an 8.5 out of 10. Like an 8.5 out of 10. But at the end of it, I remember there was a, there was a point in my playthrough where I... Uh, I was just exhausted by the combat. Like, just the, the... The repeated of just... It was all about timing, and it was all about just pattern recognition. And once you got good at that, there was ways that you could abuse it. And there was things that you could sort of manipulate enemies to work for you instead of trying to find a different kind of strategy. It was pretty apparent that the strategy was like... In, in this game, the strategy was very obvious, like what you have to do for its combat. So I dug it. Um, when I first got to the last boss, I was super done, and that's because I played the game for 13 hours or something. 13 hours, and I had to come back a couple of streams later and then just beat the boss almost no problem. There was at one point a gap where I, I was trying to do things differently during the boss fight just to see if there was like, there's gotta be something else than just having to do parry timing against him and that was literally it. It was just parry timing against this this last boss fight and then that was it. Um, I was kinda, at the end of the game, it's like I think the game is really good, but at the end of it, I was kinda done. I was kinda just like, the magic of the game was the levels. The level design was friggin' amazing. The whole feeling of coming across something and revealing where you are, and you're like, wait a minute, I'm here? Like, that that whole mad, m like magical aspect of all of Miyazaki's games, I think is really cool. But just something in Sekiro just didn't, didn't grab me enough to want to keep playing, which is why I think it's still really good. But I definitely got burnout on this game faster than almost any other of the Souls games. And I'd argue that Bloodborne has some much more difficult bosses than this game. Much, much more difficult. Like, holy shit, if I could even... I spent, I spent six hours trying to kill... Because I was playing on New Game Plus Plus, I spent six hours trying to kill... Uh, some of the DLC bosses in Bloodborne. Like, it took me friggin' forever, man. I just think there's something about the combat at the end of the day that isn't as satisfying. That just isn't as satisfying. There's, yeah, there's not much replay value to try different things. The game kind of wants you to play it in a very specific way. So, like I said, 
It's good. It's a super good game. Do I think that it is best game of the year? I don't. But I think it absolutely deserves a nomination because there's not. I think it's. I think it's. A, it's a. It's a fun ass game that is tough, and it's. It's challenge is a big part of why it's actually fun. Because man, I took a a few like a couple of days break when I was trying to play the game too much too fast because there was other games coming out and I just came back to it and I almost had no problem against that last boss fight it was weird like I burned out really hard on the game really fast which never happened to me in a previous uh, Souls game so it feels like this is the good precursor to something that could happen in the future and that there could be another Sekiro style style game that might have a bit more variety in its mechanics might have a bit more variety or even another Souls-like game that incorporates the way this game's combat system kind of works. It feels like this is like the beginning of something super sick. So, we'll see how that goes, but yeah, to me, Sekiro is uh, definitely deserving of Game of the Year material, but doesn't quite take it. Devil May Cry 5, probably one of the most anticipated games I think could have possibly existed for Capcom fans in general. DMC 5 is easily in my consideration for game of the year um i might even put some other games up there a, a bit higher critically but dmc5 did things for me that that i look for in games just it's what i want and i, I think there's some aspects of dmc5 that aren't great some of the environments obviously aren't as engaging or interesting potentially as even the first dmc or maybe some parts of dmc3 but something about the way DMC5 feels like they're what they were going for was to like give you a level of precision of action games that they tried to do with the previous games and I feel they 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 did it if that was their goal to be like make to bring action games back in some way that the character action game experience can be refined to a point of which it is to which the, the, the influence of the character's attacks, the timing of the music, the timing of the sound effects, the feel of the impacts, like where that stuff is, in, in the developer's opinion, priority number one, how good do you feel playing this game? I can't really think of many other games that make me have made me feel that way. That, that, that shit is an art, and that's the stuff that a lot of devs are afraid of. Like, it's the stuff that makes, that makes Kratos recalling the axe in God of War and throwing the axe makes makes that so satisfying. And this entire game, like the whole game is just you pulling the axe back. You know, one of the greatest feelings in that in 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 God of War is that feeling. The whole game is that. Like, and that's tough. Like that takes a level of design and that takes a level of experience that I, I think absolutely needs to be um, appreciated, even though I don't think the game is perfect. Like on my on my personal on, on a critically reviewing level, I think I'd probably give Devil May Cry 5 a 9. A 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. However, I've identified that over the years, I have a review scale that is based on critical review as well as personal review. And I think that needs to be in, in consideration for all these games. I actually think my critical review of Sekiro might be like a 9, but my personal review might be an 8.5. In DMC 5, my critical review is a 9, but my personal review is a 10 out of 10. Is an absolute 10 out of 10. Just how much shit you can do. It was almost too much! Like, you want to talk about a game where it's like, fun is allowed? This game, there's too much fun allowed. There's too much! I can't even think of how much fun I can have. That's, it's fucked up! I can now surf my arm into a guy to repel off of a rocket while Dante flies on his bike and I transform them into motorcycle weapons while I conduct an orchestra and kill a dickhead with a raging tiger. Devil May Cry 5 is fucking nuts. It's too much fun. But I think also the characters. Like, they made... They made Nero even better a character than he ever has been. And I like Nero from before. Now they made Nero, like, the legit hero of Devil May Cry, which I think is, which I think is great. I'm glad they didn't ditch, ditch Nero. I'm glad V ended up being a very cool character and in the introduction of what his real character is and everything like that. Dante coming back and being different than he ever has been, like, the way Nico, it, like, everybody in the game is so sick. Like, having the characters just talk to each other feels like it's, feels like it's worth the price of admission alone. 
And that's important, man. This game, this game and Resident Evil 2, in my opinion, are really the Capcom is back. It's not DMC is back. Because I, I want to give, I want to give Itsuno-san as much credit as I possibly can as a lifelong Capcom fan. This game isn't as much DMC is back. This game is Capcom is back. Like it, it, it harkens back to the reason that this company got the fans it did for 20 years. And it, it brought people back to the point of which, that's right, these guys are really good at highest quality visuals in the industry, as well as some of the best gameplay. That's crazy. That's crazy. And this was one of the first games of the year one of the first games in this year that really did it. So I have to give it to them. I loved DMC5. I wanna, I, I'm looking at it now and I just wanna play it again. <laughs> I'm looking at this shit now and I, I honestly, it makes me just wanna play it again. And it all comes down to that it was fun. It was just very, very, very fun to play. Resident Evil 2 is absolutely on this list. Like, it's obvious RE2 is on this list. This was the year that Capcom just dominated. Like, 2019 was the year of the Cap God. And in, in, for me personally, uh, this playthrough was really special to me because I, I, I made some terrible decisions in this playthrough. We treated it like a survival horror situation. I actively made bad decisions and then didn't correct them and had to survive the horror that was your terrible decision making. And I think it could have been in part that first playthrough, just having no clue, like went into this game having I went on like a media blackout for a little while, just having no idea what was going to be coming around the next corner. Having no idea when Mr. X was going to show up, how Mr. X was going to show up, what it, what he was going to be like. Can you kill him? Can I just wanted to be left completely in the dark in that situation. And I'm so glad I did because that is, that is the magic of these games. These games are relying on you to have a very little amount of information and for them to just tease the shit out of you and try to freak you out at every given moment. It's so good. It's so good. The, the funny thing is that I would even say the original Resident Evil 2 is a more fun game. I would argue that. I'd argue RE2 original still has its place. And this is why I think this is a good remake. Um, this game changed Resident Evil 2. Resident Evil Remake, the first one, didn't change uh, a, a, so much of RE1 where you wanted to go back and play RE1 again, right? There was something, there was something about the original Resident Evil Remake that was just like, oh my god, this is just so much better. So much better than the, than the original game. It was just like night and day. It felt like it was 15 years in the future. For me, it, it almost makes RE1 just like a meme at this point. If you want to go back and you play RE1, it kind of like replaces the original, you know? There are things that I still like more in RE2 original than I do in this game. There are things in this game that are so much better than the original RE2 than I think of the, than I think of the original. What I'm trying to say is I think Resident Evil Remake, the first one, just overwrites the original Resident Evil, right? You can watch it for laughs, you can play it for laughs, you can play it for jokes, you can play it for the bad voice acting. It's essentially been memed, and it's it's got its history. However, this game complements Resident Evil 2, in my opinion. Because RE2, when you go back and you play the original, I think the original RE2 has better pacing. I think RE2 original is more fun because of how much it flows. And that's a compliment to this game, because this game's more challenging than the original Res Resident Evil 2, in my opinion. Like, completely way more challenging. Uh, and that could be because I played it on hardcore. But RE2 is a very fun game. You just sort of breeze through RE2, and I just, like, you just jam on that game for three to, three to six hours, and it's just a fucking blast. Like, the way that game takes you through the police station, and then all the way down to the bottom, I think that game still holds a candle. I think it's still actually really, really, really good. But this game is a completely different experience. It's RE2, you're the same characters, you're in the same place, a very similar sequence of events happens, but this is like the way you do a remake. Like this is, in my opinion, RE2 is the best way to do a remake because both versions are incredible. 
Like, this is so, this is a, so much of a better game than Resident Evil 2, and I love this game, and I would absolutely play it again. But there's something about, like, the pacing of the original RE2 that still, in my opinion, stands the test of time. And still is super fun. You can get me to be like, Yo, do you want to play Resident Evil Remake or Resident Evil Original? Fucking Remake? Jesus. Do you want to play Resident Evil 2 Remake or Resident Evil 2 Original? I can play either one. I'm super cool with either one. I'm super down with playing the original RE2. I'm super down with playing the, the, the new Resident Evil as well. They are similar experiences, but also different. And that is why this is like one of the ultimate remakes in my opinion. I personally feel that RE2 has did, did it in ways that I don't think we were expecting and also did it in ways that ended up surpassing the original because it is a completely, it's just a completely different game. And I still think the pacing of RE2 vanilla is actually better than this game. I think it's an incredibly fun game still. It's so much fun to just run through. I don't think this game is as much fun to just go through as fast as possible as RE2 original. And actually, I'd actually say RE2 is more fun to just like solve this, do this, gotta go here, bing, bang, bang, bango, bingo. Like the whole Resident Evil, um, the gameplay loop of all these games. You now know where to go, solve the puzzles. The visuals in this game, the way it feels, the way it plays. I actually like the way they treated the zombies in this game. I like the fact, I like the fact that the zombies are not confirmed like dead at all times there's things that you can learn about the way they act there's the new stuff that they add to the game that absolutely amplifies the experience the atmosphere like these guys did for resident evil which is the same thing that remake managed to do for resident evil back in the early 2000s this game made resident evil scary again and that's something that is they managed to take the horror and re-inject it back into the series that RE7 had. But RE7 was a much different game. A lot of us were like, oh, can they still do horror with the over-the-shoulder camera? Or is the over-the-shoulder camera locked to like an action game at this point? And they they convinced us, no, you can still you can still do over-the-shoulder camera. It doesn't have to be the first person horror experience that RE7 was. You can have an action game and a horror game and merge them into one. You're allowed to do that. And we're gonna, we're gonna show you that you can do that. This game highlights it perfectly. What I love about it is that it didn't delete the original RE2. All it did was show me how good it is. Final game of the year is absolutely going to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Capcom just dominated this year for me, man. Uh, so Iceborne is, a, is an expansion. But at the same time, possibly one of the biggest expansions Capcom has ever made. It's practically a sequel. There's so much new shit in this game that it's ridiculous. I was already playing Monster Hunter whenever new stuff was coming out. Like Monster Hunter World was already a game that captivated me enough ever since its initial re release that I had been returning to it over and over and over again. Iceborne with the, the changes in mechanics, how many new monsters they ended up adding to the game. The fact that they did exactly what they wanted them to do to gear. They made all the gear in this game finally look sick. The high rank gear had some cool looking pieces, but the the regular gear didn't have some, obviously some sort of whack looking stuff, some jokey looking armor. This game, they specifically designed all the, all the highest rank gear to look amazing. To look amazing. It's impossible to think that we played Monster Hunter without a clutch claw before this shit. Without a damn clutch claw. I can't even, I can't even tell you. Like, how the hell did we do that? And I really, I really think this game's something special. I mean, Capcom deserves it because Monster Hunter is their biggest game of all time. Monster Hunter World. Iceborne is going to expand that by the time this, this year is over. And you're going in the next year. And whatever the hell they're planning for the next years of this, they had some crazy ass events for this game that were just ridiculously cool between the Resident Evil stuff. I don't know, dude. I think Iceborne's really special. I think it's great. This game turned me into a Monster Hunter fan. And dude, so much of Iceborne is so dope. I mean, I think it just because they had more graphical fidelity to take the game in a different direction, um, to go for a more realistic look. But so, so many of the mechanics and the way that weapons work in this game, like every weapon in this game is a fighting game character. And I love that about it. Even now, like even even with the new stuff that, they, that they've added to every single weapon, it's even more so. It feels like 
it feels like you're playing UMVC3, but like a whole nother side of the roster, like a way bigger addition to the roster came out. So I got to give it. Uh, Monster Hunter World Iceborne is still, whether you can consider it an expansion or a new game, it's got enough content to be considered a brand new game, in my opinion, in my personal opinion. Uh, but I have, I have to consider it. Like, there's no... I can't... I definitely can't put this game on a best of the year list in this situation because it's just too good. It's too good and it's still going. They're still adding shit. They, they added shit to Monster Hunter World all the way until the release of this one. It's ridiculous, man. This game, Resident Evil 2 and DMC5 came out this year. Like, I'm kind of worried that we'll never get a year as good as this for Capcom like again. I'm almost worried, you know? If I was to put these on a an official listing, I'd give number four is Sekiro. I think deserves a spot on best game of the year because it was easily one of the best games I personally played this year. I think the third spot goes to Iceborne. Iceborne is a an expansion of what already worked and was already really good. It's just they managed to make it way better. They did. They, they put so much effort, way more effort than we ever thought they were going to put into it to make Iceborne an amazing game. And then number two, here's where it gets tricky. Here's where it gets a bit tricky for me. I think number two is Resident Evil 2. And I think number one is DMC5. But that's my personal rating. That's my, that's my own personal rating for my favorite games this year. I think DMC5 is my personal game of the year. But I think critically RE2 is actually a better game than DMC5. I think I would actually rate, I'd give RE2 like a 10 out of 10, like critically. I feel there's, there's not a lot that there's really wrong with that game. And if there is even a part, a part of that game that I think is not that good, RE2 is still so damn good. But there's parts of DMC5 that I can actively say, yeah, some of this isn't great. Some of this is not the best. But this is the difference between having a critical game of the year and a personal game of the year. I personally give it to DMC5 because DMC5 gave me like video game feels. Things that I love about games was, were, was in that game. Things that were happening to me as a player were, was going on in that game to me as a player. It wasn't a cutscene that was doing it, it was the incorporation of of controls, visuals, and music all at the same time. And that's why DMC5, I, I give my personal game of 2019. Right next to Jump Force, the greatest game of the year.